Hello guys, today we are going to look at how to set up Project 2 in CMG. So Project 2 is a 2D black oil reservoir problem. Our reservoir has gravity and capillary pressure as well. So this document has all of our reservoir, fluid and rock properties as well as our well location and constraints and a couple of contour maps of our reservoir. So as you can see, this is our depth field, this is our thickness um, contour map. We also have porosity and permeability plots. We have a correlation for capillary pressure. We, have, we also have PVT data, uh, which is basically a pressure and form how formation of volume factor and viscosity changes with pressure. We also have some, we also have our well constraints. So this table tells us what kind of well we have, where the well is located, and what operating constraints the well is subjected to. So the first thing we need to do is open up CMG, CMG launcher. This is the screen we get. And then since our problem is a black oil um, model, we're going to open Builder. Actually, even if it wasn't Builder, even if it wasn't black oil, we would still open, we would still open Builder. Next, we're going to go to File and then New. And then since we have a black oil, we're going to select IMAX. If we had a heavy oil and we were trying to inject some kind of um, steam or or add a heater well, we would have chosen STARS. So STARS is a thermal simulator. And if we, we had we wanted to do a compositional simulation, we would have chosen GEM. But in our case, we're going to just go with IMAX. Under working units, we're going to choose field because the reservoir properties were given to us in field units in the document that came with the project. Then we're going to click on OK, and then OK again. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our reservoir boundaries. So I'm going to go to Reservoir. So on the left menu bar, I'm going to go to Reservoir. I'm going to click on the arrow beside Reservoir. And I'm going to choose Create Grid. And then I'm going to select Cartesian. So that's Reservoir, Create Grid, and then Cartesian. And then this, this box comes up. Uh, basically, it's asking us how many grid blocks do we have in, in the I direction. The I direction is the X direction. So from our project documents, we know that we have 80 grid blocks in the X direction, 75 in the Y direction. And since it's a 2D problem, we only have one grid block in the I direction. Next, it's, ask, it's asking us for block width. So basically, this is block width in the I direction is our dx. So since our reservoir length is 6,000 feet and we have 80 grid blocks, our dx is going to be 80 grid blocks times 75 feet. And in the J direction, we're going to have 75 grid blocks times 100, since, since our reservoir width is 7,500 feet. Then I'm going to select OK. Actually, I think I might have made a mistake. So I'm going to go back to Create Grid and then Cartesian. And then, yes, yeah, so my mistake was I put in 75 times 1,000 instead of 75 times 100. So this is what we should have. Next, I'm going to go, I'm going to click on Reservoir. Then I'm going to double click Array Properties. So this is basically where we are going to put in our reservoir depth, our reservoir thickness, and porosity, and perm. So I'm going to double click on Array Properties. 
under under grid top, I'm going to go to layer one. Grid top is basically the depth from the surface to the top of our reservoir. That's what grid top stands for. So I'm just going to put in a thousand feet for now because at the end we're going to go into the notepad format of this file that we are making and we're going to put in the variable depths that we have. So for now I'm just going to put in a thousand. Eventually we're going to change that to reflect that we have variable uh, reservoir depth. Next, under grid thickness, I'm just going to put in 10 for now. Under porosity, I'm just going to put in 0 0.2 for now. Under perm, under permeability in the eye direction, I'm just going to put in 100 millidarcies for now. Again, we're, we're going to change all of these in the notepad file. Under permeability J, I'm going to go to under permeability J and in the row that corresponds to whole grid, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to say um, edit specification. So perm J, I'm going to say edit specification and then I'm going to say equals I. Where it says equal, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select equals I times and our anisotropy factor is 0 0.15 for now. So I'm going to put that in 0 0.15 and I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to go to permeability in the K direction. I'm going to go to the row that corresponds to whole grid. I'm going to right click and say equals I and then OK. So basically, permeability in the J direction is equal to permeability in the I direction times 0 0.15, while permeability in the K direction is equal to permeability in the I direction. So I'm going to say OK, then I'm going to say OK again. Next, we're going to go under rock compressibility. So under reservoir, we double click on rock compressibility. And then our rock compressibility from our project document is 1e to negative 6. So I'm going to put that in. And I'm going to say OK. So now we have a green check mark, check mark under reservoir. Next, we can go to components. So this is basically where we're going to put in our PVT information. So under components, I'm going to double click on model. So components and then double click on model. Then I'm going to say launch dialog to create a quick black oil model using correlations. And I'm going to say OK. Reservoir temperature I'm going to say is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Generate data up to a maximum pressure of I'm going to say 6000 PSI. OK. Under bubble point pressure calculation, I'm going to say the bubble point should be generated from the gas oil ratio that we're going to put in. And this gas oil ratio is going to be basically an extremely low number because, again, it's a black oil, so we don't expect or we don't want to see gas. It's a black oil two phase simulation, so we don't want to see gas. So I'm just going to say this is a low number. So 1e to the negative 40, for example. And then under oil density, our oil density is 53 pounds per, per cubic feet. So I'm going to put in 53. And then under gas density, this doesn't really matter because we're not going to have gas. But I'm just going to say the gas has a gas gravity of 0 0.05. And then under reference pressure for water properties, I'm going to say 4,500 PSI uh, because this is the pressure, this is the initial pressure at the water oil contact. So I'm going to put that in for reference pressure. And then pressure dependence of water viscosity, I'm going to say that is zero. 
So basically, water viscosity does not change with pressure. Then I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say OK again. And now we have a green check mark, check mark on the components. But we're going to need to change some of the values that CMG has made up for us. So under components, I'm going to click on PVT region 1. So components and then PVT region 1. So our oil density is correct. Our gas density doesn't matter. So I'm just going to leave that. Our water density, the project document says our water density is 62.4. So I'm going to change this value to 62.4. And then also this, this is for oil. So CO stands for oil compressibility. So from our project document, we know that this is 3e to the negative 5. So I'm going to put that in. This next row is uh, pressure dependence of oil viscosity. So we're going to say that viscosity is constant with pressure. So I'm going to say 0. Next, it wants formation volume factor for water. From our project, from our project document, we know that this is 0 0.945. So I'm going to enter that value, 0 0.945. Next, it's asking for our water compressibility. So we know that this is 2.87 e to the negative 6. So I'm just going to change that to 2.87 e to the negative 6. The last thing we need to change is our water viscosity. Our water viscosity is actually 0 0.383 centipoise. So I'm going to change that to 0 0.383 centipoise. Then I'm going to say apply. And then in this, on this tab, I'm going to uncheck the box that says include all compressibility in PVT table. So I'm going to uncheck this box. Then I'm going to say apply again. And then the last thing that we're going to do for our PVT data is I'm going to go to this Excel file that I created. So this column is essentially oil viscosity that was provided to, to us in the project description. So I'm just going to copy. I'm just going to copy that column and then go back to our CMG file and just paste under viscosity. And then we're going to say apply and OK. So now we are done with our PVT information. Next, we're going to go to rock fluid. I'm going to click on rock fluid. This is basically where we put in our rail perm and capillary pressure information. So under rock fluid, I'm going to go to, I'm going to double click on rock fluid types. Then I'm going to go on top and click on this arrow. So where we see rock type, I'm just going to go to the arrow. I'm going to click on that arrow. I'm going to select new rock type. So basically, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to select new rock type. Then next I'm going to do is I'm going to go to tools. So tools, I'm going to say generate tables using correlations. So that's tools, and then generate tables using correlations. So this is basically asking us for our saturation and rel perm endpoints, as well as the exponents needed to calculate our rel perm curves. So from the project document, we know that our residual water saturation is 0 0.2. So the first two rows are going to be 0 0.2 for water residuals. The next is our oil residual, which is 0 0.4. So I'm going to put that in for the next two rows. And then next we have our endpoint saturation. So this is basically irreducible oil for the gas liquid table. Since we don't have gas, this doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to put in 0 0.4 for this one. I'm just going to put in 0 0.4. I'm going to put in 0 0.4. For this one as well. And this is basically residual gas saturation. I'm going to say that is zero. 
So we don't have any residual gas. And I say it's zero. And then our KRO at Kone Water, so that's basically our maximum KRO. The word, the project document says it's 0 0.8. We're going to put that in. Our KRW endpoint is 0 0.3. So I'm going to put that in as well. And then the KRG endpoint, since we don't have gas, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to put in 0 0.8 for both of them. And then from the Word document, we know that all of our exponents are 2. So I'm just going to put in 2 for all of them. And I'm going to say apply. Apply and OK. And I'm going to say apply again. And now we have a green check mark under rock fluid. The next thing we need to do before we leave the rock fluid tab is we're going to put in capillary pressure. So I'm going to check the box that says include capillary pressure. I'm going to check that box. And then what I'm going to do is since we have a relationship for, we have a relationship for capillary pressure. So that is essentially this equation. So we have this equation for capillary pressure. I'm going to go which and basically this capillary pressure depends on our water saturation. It depends on Kone water saturation. It depends on PE, which is capillary entry pressure. And it also depends on lambda. So what, I, what, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to CMG. I'm going to copy the column for water saturation. I'm going to copy the column for water saturation. And then I have an Excel file where, where I basically put in the correlation for capillary pressure. So I'm going to paste our saturations here. And this column has the equation for capillary pressure, which again depends on water saturation, Kone water saturation, capillary entry pressure, PE, and lambda. So I'm just going to solve for capillary pressure for all saturations. And then if you notice, if we go back to the equation for capillary pressure, you would see that um, at residual water saturation, we have a zero in our numerator. And since all of this is raised to a negative power, we are going to have a problem of dividing by zero when SW is equal to SW residual. So I'm going to fix this by just saying, by just making the first saturation equals to 0 0.2001. Then I'm going to copy this column for capillary pressure. So copy, and I'm going to paste it in CMG under the column for capillary pressure. So now we have our capillary pressure curve as well. And we can say apply and OK. So now we are done with our rock fluid properties. Next, we're going to go under initial conditions. So under initial conditions. This is basically where we are going to say what the initial pressure is and where our water all contact is. I'm going to go under initial conditions. And then I'm going to go to advanced. So I'm going to click on advanced. And then a new tab pops up. I am going to choose the second option. So basically, CMG is going to use um, gravity and capillary pressure to initialize our reservoir in terms of saturation and pressure. So I'm going to choose the second option. And then I'm going to say we have only water and oil in our reservoir, no free gas. So that's the second option under the second option. I'm going to say apply and OK. And then I'm going to go to PVT region parameters. So essentially, we're going to put in our initial pressure, which is 4,500 PSI at a depth of 7474.45. So this is our this is the depth, 
which also corresponds to our water oil contact, so 7444.45. So what we have basically said is that our initial pressure is 4500 psi at a depth at our water oil contact, which is at a depth of 7474.45 feet deep. Then we're going to say apply and then OK. Next, I'm going to go under numerical. I'm going to double click on numerical. And, and then since our time step is supposed to be one day, I'm going to go to under first time step size after well change. I'm going to make that one day. And then under minimum time step size, I'm going to just make that as close to one as possible, but below one. So 0 0.999 works. And then under under maximum time step size, I'm going to say one day. So this is basically forcing our DT to be one day, our delta T to be one day. So then apply and OK. Now we're going to save our file. So to save, we're going to go under I slash O control. Then we're going to click on this on this icon on top that says probe mode. So click on probe mode. Now we can go under file and then save. I'm going to save this under the name CMG project 2. Then I'm going to save. OK. Next, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to close out this, this, this. I'm going to close out the CMG window. Save changes to CMG project 2. Yes. OK. And yes again. And then what we want to do now is we want to put in our variable porosity, perm, grid thickness, and grid depth. So we were given files for our depth, permeability, porosity, and thickness. So that's this our thickness. Make this a little bit larger so you can see. Yes, so this file is for our depth. So this is the depth of all our of all of our grid box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to CMG launcher. So this is the CMG launcher. I'm gonna go to the file that we just saved. So the file that we just saved was named CMG project two and it's a dot dat file. So I'm going to right click on that file and then I'm, I'm going to click on edit. So we're going to edit our file. So I'm going to, so basically what I did was I went to launcher. I right clicked on the file that we just saved and then I selected edit. So now this is our, this is all the information that we put in previously. So where we have, the first thing I'm going to do is under results axis directions we have one negative one and one so i'm going to take out the negative before the second one so basically i'm we're saying that our x y and z axis are in the positive direction so all three numbers are positive so one, one, one. Next, I'm going to go under where we have DK all. So basically, DK is our thickness. DK is our thickness. I'm going to go under DK all. I'm going to delete 6,000 times 10. So basically, that's saying that all of our grid blocks have a thickness of 10, which is not the case. I'm going to take that out. And then I'm going to open the file that has our thickness. So that's PJ1 thickness. I'm going to open that file. I'm just going to copy everything. So copy. And then I'm going to paste it back in, back under DK all. So 
So again, I pasted that under DK all because DK is a keyword for thickness. Next I'm, next, I'm going to change our depth. The keyword for depth is D top. So that's this keyword, D top. Again, we have a depth of a thousand for all of our grid blocks. I'm going to take that out. And then I'm going to put in what we actually have, which is this file, PJ1 depth. So I'm going to copy everything again. And then we are going to paste that under D top in our CMG file. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to change our, we are going to change our permeability. So we have perm I C O N a hundred, which is basically saying that our perm is constant, is constant at a hundred. Again, we know that this is not the case. So I'm going to delete C O N a hundred. I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to go back to the file that has our perm. So that's PJ1 permeability. So I'm going to open that file. Again, I'm going to copy everything. And I'm going to go back to the CMG file, to the CMG file in Notepad and paste our permeability under perm I. So the keyword for perm is perm I. That's perm the I direction. I'm going to paste the perm that we just got from our file. Next, I am going to change our porosity. That's the last thing we need to change. Again, we set it to be constant at 0 0.2. But that is not the case. So I'm going to delete CON 0 0.2. Then I'm going to go to the file that has our porosity. So that's PJ1 porosity. I'm going to copy everything. And then I'm going to paste it in the CMG file as well. So, so under POR, we're going to paste our porosity. And now we can go to file and then save. File and then save. And we can close this out and then go back to CMG launcher. I'm going to refresh this tab. So on top, I'm going to click on refresh. Then I'm going to drag our file back to builder so click on click and drag the file to builder next thing we're going to do in order to get our reservoir shape i am going to go to reservoir i am going to go to array properties so that's reservoir and then array properties i'm going to search for null blocks so n u l l blocks then I'm going to go under whole grid. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say edit specification. So that's no blocks, whole grid, edit specification. And then I'm going to say set blocks to null where porosity is less than or equal to zero. So basically if porosity is equal to zero, then that block is outside our reservoir. I'm going to say okay and then okay again. And then OK. So now we have our reservoir shape. And we can look at our porosity profile. So that's porosity. We can look at our permeability profile. So that's this plot. We can also look at our um, depth. So that's going to be grid, grid top. So this is our depth. This is our this is a contour map of our of reservoir depth. The last thing we need to do is to add our wells. So we go to wells and recurrent. We basically have six wells, so we're gonna add six wells. And then we're also gonna add two extra wells because we have a condition in our reservoir where some producers are changed to injectors. So we need to have two new wells to represent the two producers that were changed to injectors. So I'm going to go to wells and recurrent. Under wells, I'm going to right click. 
and I'm going to say new. So well one. Um, our world. These are these are our world constraints. So six wells. Well, well one is a vertical well that has a before before eighteen twenty six days. It was a constant rate producer with a um, production rate of two sixty STB per day. So I'm going to go back to our file, our CMG file, and then I'm going to say, well, one is a producer. And I'm going to go to constraints. So under world type, I put in producer because it's a producer. And then under constraints, I'm going to click on constraints. I'm going to select constraint definition. So I'm going to check this box. Then under constraints, I'm going to say operate. Under parameter, I'm going to say constant surface liquid rate. So we were given a rate in stock tank barrels per day. So obviously that is at surface conditions. So surface liquid rate is 260 STB per day. So I'm going to put in 260. And I'm going to say, so after I do that, I'm going to say add new well to this option, add new well at the bottom. Our well 2 is also a producer. So under type, I'm going to say producer. I'm going to go to constraints. I'm going to say constraint definition. We're going to, it's also a constant rate well. So we're going to operate at a surface liquid rate of 150 barrels per day and then I'm going to say add new well again so this is our third well which is also a producer and under constraints this is also a constant rate well so I'm going to say constraint definition I'm going to say we're going to operate this well at a surface liquid rate of 400 barrels per day so that's 400 and then add new well again it's a producer go to constraints constraint definition we're going to operate this well at a surface liquid rate of 250 250 barrels per day then add new well again well 5 is a producer we're going to go to constraint definition. And this well is a constant bottom hole pressure well. So I'm going to say operate. And then under parameter, I'm going to say bottom hole pressure. So this option, bottom hole pressure. And our bottom hole pressure is actually 100 PSI, so 100. And then our sixth well, well 6, is also a producer. Under constraints, it's a constant bottom hole pressure well as well. So I'm going to say operate at a bottom hole pressure of 150 psi. 150 psi, and then okay. Next thing we're going to do is the project document says that after. 1,826 days, wells 5 and 6 are converted to injectors that are injecting at the rate of 1,500 barrels of water per day. And also, wells 1 through 4 are changed to constant bottom hole pressure wells. So we're going to expand wells. We're going to click on well 1. I'm going to click on well 1. So, so click on well one. We're gonna go. We're gonna click on the calendar, and then under days since simulation starts, we're gonna select. We're gonna type in a thousand eight hundred and twenty-six days. 
And then we're going to say OK. And then we're going to go to constraints. We are going to say constraint definition. And we're going to change our constraint to bottom hole pressure. And our new bottom hole pressure is 100 PSI. I'm going to click enter and then apply. So basically, well, one now has two constraints. For the first 1,826 days, it was a constant rate well. But then after 1,826 days, it became a constant bottom hole pressure well. So it changed from a constant rate well to a constant bottom hole pressure well. And we can do the same thing for wells 2, 3, and 4. So we click on well 2. We click on the calendar. Days since simulation starts. That's 1826. And then OK. Go to constraints. Click check constraint definition. Change it to a bottom hole pressure of, this is actually 75 PSI. So 75 PSI. And then apply. Go to well 3. Click on the calendar icon. Days since simulation starts, 1826. Click on OK. Go to constraints, constraint definition, bottom hole pressure of 50 PSI. And then apply. And then the same thing for wall 4 again. Click on, we're going to click on wall 4. We're going to click on the calendar. We're going to say days since simulation start is 1826. And then we're going to say, OK, constraints, constraint definition, bottom hole pressure of 100 PSI. And then apply. For well five, for wells five and six, what we're going to do is we're actually going to shut in those two wells after one eight two six days. So the idea is we shut in the wells after one eight two six days, and then we we drill new wells at the exact same locations, but we make those wells injectors. So that's basically how you change a producer to an injector in CMG. You shut in the producer and you drill an injector in the exact same location. So I'm going to go to well 5. I'm going to go I'm going to click on the calendar. Days since simulation starts, I'm going to say it's 1826. I'm going to say okay. And then I'm going to go to options. So not constraints, but options. And then under status, I'm going to check the box that says status. I'm going to say shut in. So options, status, shut in apply. The same thing for well 6. You click, we click on well 6. We click on the calendar. 1826. And then OK. We go to options. Check the box that says status. And then we shut in the well. And then apply. And then OK. So now that we've shut in wells 5 and 6 after 1826 days, we need to drill injectors to replace them. So right click on wells, select new. So this is going to be well 5 injector. So well 5 in just something like that. It's going to be an injector MOB weight. And then under definition date, so under definition date, we're going to say Days since simulation starts is 1826. So basically, this world is going to come online after 1826 days. And then under constraints, I'm going to select constraint definition. And then this is a constant rate injector. I'm going to say operates. And we are injecting water. So surface water rate. And our injection rate is. 1500 barrels per day. So this is 1500. And I'm going to say add new well. 
this is going to be well six injector it's also an injector mob weight the definition date is going to be after it's going to come online after one eight two six days so okay then i'm going to go to constraints the same constraints as well five injector so that's going to be operates at a constant injection water rate of 1500 barrels per day and then okay so now we have all our wells the final step is we're going to have to put in the well locations so if we look at our well data we have x coordinates y coordinates and we can convert this, we can convert the, the information from coordinates to, to grid block number. So for example, if the x coordinate is 3675, and we know that dx is 75, we can divide 3675 by 75 to get the location in the x direction. So I did that for all of our coordinates, and we have these uh, values for grid location also for the horizontal wells because we know that our horizontal well length is 225 and our dx is 75 so that means that our horizontal wells go through three blocks because 225 which is the well length divided by 75 gives us three so what we do is we say that the well goes from block 35. So this, so well, well three, for example, is going to, we're going to say it's 34 colon 36 in the X direction. So basically it passes through blocks 34, 35 and 36 in the X direction. And, and it's Y block number is 44 it's z block number is one for example so back in cmg i'm going to put in those those numbers so what we do to put in our well location is we click on the well that we are interested in so well one for example we click on the plus beside well one so there's, there's a plus beside well one we click on it and then we're going to click on perf so the dates and then perf, we're going to click on that. We're going to go to perforations. So we're going to go under perforations. And then I'm going to, we're going to click on insert before selected node. So that's the first option, insert before selected node. And then our block number is 49 in the I direction, 56 in the J direction and then one in the K direction. We're going to say apply. And then next we're going to go to well two. We're going to say insert before selected node. So for well two, our coordinates are 51, 36, and one. We're going to say apply. Then we're going to scroll down to well three. This is a horizontal well. It's 34 colon 36. So that's basically saying that in the I direction, the well passes through blocks 35, 34, and 36. So 34 colon 36, then space 44, and then one, apply. Then well four, well four, we're gonna insert, insert before selected node. This is 30, colon 32 space 27 and then one then apply well five is a vertical well and the grid block number is 15 11 1 apply well five injector is obviously in the same location as well five so that's also 15 11 1 and then apply yes then well, well six, insert before selected node. Well six location is six, 31, 
one, then apply. Well, six injector is in the same location, so that's also six thirty one one, and then apply, and then yes. Then apply again, and then okay. So now we have green check check marks for everything. The last thing we need to do is we need to go back to wells three and four. Because those two wells are horizontal wells, we need to tell CMG that they are horizontal wells. So we go to the plus beside wall three. We click on perf. Under general, where it says direction. So under general direction, we're going to say, we're going to change that to the I axis, then apply. Then we go to wall four and we change it from K axis to I axis. So that basically tells CMG that it's a horizontal well, and then OK. So now we have that as a horizontal well. Apply and OK. Now we can add our dates. So we go under, under wells and recurrent. We double click on dates. And then we say add a range of dates. So add a range of dates. And then our step size is going to be one day. So we're going to move in increments of a day. And then we're going to go from our start date to, we're going to go to three, nine, eight, seven days. Three, nine, eight, seven days. And then OK. And then OK again. Now we've added our dates. We can close this out. And now we are ready to run our simulation. We can save one more time. And then we can save validate with IMAX. Should take about a minute to run. While it's running, we can go to CMG Launcher. So now we have a couple of new files that have been created. The file that we're interested in is called CMG Project 2.irf. So that's this file. We can drag this file into results 3D. So we dragged the IRF file into results 3D. And basically what this gives us is 3D plots of pressure, saturation, and stuff like that. So we can look at so if we want, we can look at pressure. We can look at reservoir pressure. So that's going to be, uh, we scroll down to pressure. In our reservoir, we can look at the initial pressure. So this is our initial pressure. This is our initial pressure. And then we can move this through time to see how the pressure changes with time. So we basically move this marker through time to, to see how pressure changes with time. The next thing that we can look at is graphs. So graphs of production, for example. And what we do is we drag our IRF file into results graph. So we drag the IRF file into results graph. And then we can, we can say we can go to the blank white space in the center, right click and say add curve. So add curve. So if we want to see our cumulative oil production for ex our cumulative liquid production, for example, we can go under origin type, we can go to field. And then we can select producer, so default field producer. And then we just select cumulative liquid. And we have plot, we have a plot of cumulated liquid production. Next, we can also look at production rates. So that would just be we would we would right click on add plot and then we would 
right click and select add curve and then we'll go to wells we will select the well that we wanted to plot so let's say we wanted to plot production rate for well one our origin is going to be well one and then we will scroll down to get to liquid rates so liquid rates and then we can plot we can make a plot of that as well and that is all so I actually realized that my plots were slightly off and the problem was that in, in my CMG when we made our CMG file under under initial conditions so back in our CMG file in builder under initial conditions under PVT region parameters, under PVT initialization, we left the box that said reservoir initially saturated. We left that, that box checked, but that's not the case. We need to say, we need to set a constant bubble point pressure. So we click on that box and we say our constant bubble point pressure is 10 PSI. And then we say apply. So that was a mistake that I made. We need I needed to set my constant bubble point pressure to 10 psi. And then I can say apply and OK. We can validate again with IMAX. So I'll run. It should take one minute again as well. And if we go to our results back to our accumulated production plot our accumulated production and our we can also look at our production our well produ our well production as well and and wait for for CMD to finish running. Shouldn't take too long. And it's and it's done. So we can close that out. We can go back to results. And then we go to file. We say we read our simulator output now. Then we can go to our cumulative production plot, and it looks more like what I expected to see. And this is the end of the video.